Hallelujah. Praise, praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the God who called mankind from out of darkness into the light, who called all to believe, to come to know him through his son, Jesus Christ. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who made all things, who calls man to repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that all those who are called, they say many are called, but few are chosen. So as we call, as we are here preaching the gospel, the message is going out to everyone uh, that walks by. But at the end of the day, there's so few people that will choose the message. And that's what the Bible meant by many are called, but few are chosen. There are many, in the time of Jesus, there were, Jesus gave a parable that about, it's called the parable of the feast. It said a man, a man made a banquet, a marriage feast for his, his son. And he invited many people to come to the marriage feast. And they all made excuses. He said, he sent a messenger to, to the people and say, hey, look, my, I have slaughtered my, fan, my, my calf. I have made the banquet. I have food and wine for the, for the feast. Come and enjoy the feast of my son. And many of them begged him. Many of them make it, made excuses. Uh, some said, you know, I have just, you know what, I just bought a few oxen, you know, and I am going to look at it. And some say, you know, they say, have me excused from this uh, banquet. And all the ones said, I've bought a piece of land, you know, I want to go see them. So some of them, one say, you know, I got, I just got married and I want to, enjoy my honeymoon you know have me excused from this banquet that you are calling people to come to and so all of them one by one made excuses excuse not to show up not to not to be invited they, if those who are invited would uh disinvited themselves so to speak and so uh, according to the parable of jesus Jesus said that the banquet owner and, uh, was not happy and he turned to his servant and he said, look, those who are invited are not worthy. Those who are invited to come to the feast are not worthy to come. So go in to every corner on the street corner and go and invite, invite Anyone that you see, compel them to come to my feast because my feast will be jam-packed. Not how he puts it, but he said, my feast will be full. And so his servants went to the street corner. They brought everyone, the beggars, they brought everyone. And then they came to the feast and there's still room left. And he said to them, go to the highways and byways. Call more people to come. And so they went out and they invited the blind, the lame, and all of those people, the lowest of the society, that considered lowest in the society, they invited them and the marriage feast was packed with all kinds of different people. And he said, I tell you, none of those people that are invited that are not worthy to come will taste, will taste any of the feasts that, I'm pre uh, that I have prepared. Any of the meal that I prepared, they will not taste it. You see, this is the parable that Jesus told. Because he came to his own, as the Bible said in John 1. But his own did not receive him. But as many that, as, as they that received him, to them he is given the power to become the children of God, the sons of God. And so, Jesus giving this parable was 
to show us the significance of what it is, how significant it is. Jesus giving, giving this testimony, this parable, showing us that he invited his people. And all the people that were invited to come to the feast were the sons of the kingdom. For those who are considered the sons of the kingdom, they were the Jews. The Jews were invited to the feast. Some of them came, but many of them made excuses of the reason why they would not come to Jesus. And afterwards, Jesus, the marriage feast, the owner of the marriage feast, which in that parable that represents God, said to his servant, go out and even bring those the lowest part in the society to come. And afterwards, he sent them out to go and bring even the Gentiles, those who are lame blind, consider the Gentiles, those who are not Jews, to bring those who are not even Jews to come in. Because you know why? God is the God of all flesh. He's not the God of Jews only. He's not the God of whites or God of blacks. He's the God of everyone. He created all one man from out of one man and one woman he created many nations of mankind and so it's, it makes very very much sense for god to invite those who whom he did not he hasn't invited before in droves you see when god started his 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 people when god started to build he started with abraham from abraham he he called through abraham you got isaac from isaac you got jacob the patriarch we call and, and and jacob was name was changed to israel and so he had 12 sons and from there we have the 12 tribes of israel and these are called today in the bible these are called the, the descendants of abraham but of course, Abraham had other descendants, we know. And God's aim is to save all mankind. But of course, because God has given us free will, the choice to choose, He knows that not all of us are going to come. He knows that not all of us. Some of us will, uh, will, will stick our nose up to Him and, and call Him names. Some of us will come, will come willingly. Some of us who wait for things to happen to us to come before we can come to God. So, God calling one man, and through him he create he made he he formed a nation called Israel, called the nation of Israel, to which Christ came out of. Christ, or the Messiah, came from the tribe of Judah. And Jesus Christ was sent into the world to those. Oh no! Excuse, sister. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Christian. I cannot make you preach like that. So thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. Um, may you never ever lose your reward. May God bless you in abundance for for blessing a preacher. Say those who, who those who are yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Shishi. So say those who bless a prophet will receive a prophet gift. Uh, the Bible say that uh, for us to honor God with our substance, you know, those who can go. Those who can't speak, they can help those who can't speak. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the love, uh, the Christian love. The love for God and the love for His Word will compel us to also to help those who we deem, who were sent to go before us. So this is a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. So God, sending His Son into the world, sent Him to a people... Uh, his people that were called by his name and they're the children of Israel the sons of Israel that is what that parable is about 
is God sending his son into the world and inviting many people to come to receive him. And those who are called the Jews that Jesus spoke to did not receive him. Some of them did not receive him, but those who received him were the apostles. Today we know today as the apostles. And and God from day one, God from day one has been calling many people out of the darkness and us and is doing so through Jesus Christ. But in this parable, they, they rejected those who are called rejected. So as I was saying in the parable, those who were invited at first were the Jews. You know, the Bible said we, the, the, the word would go to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. But when the Jews rejected the, the gospel, they rejected Christ, that message was sent to everyone. Everyone was open to, to come in. Because God is a God of all flesh. God is a God of all of us. Um, I know a lot of people say, you know, I worship, a, I worship the different God and all of that. You may be worshiping idols, not the real God. But um, if you are someone, a human being on this planet, um, you are created by God. You're not, a, you're not a chance. You're not an accident. Despite what, uh, what uh, people, uh, fake, uh, fake science will tell you today. What people who practice and call it evolution, that we are all, all process of evolution. They are lying to you. Anyone who tells you that your forefathers came from monkeys and all of that, and they are lying to you. And they themselves are infected by the, by the, by the programming of the system. But anyone who tells you, you know that you that we are created by God, that's number one. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of wisdom. You and I are created in the image of God. You know, you may be worshiping a different uh, different gods. You know, that's a rebellion against the true God. But God is still calling you to repent. You know, in many lands they worship different gods. You know, some people worship, you know, idols. And they call it um, all kinds of different names. And some people worship idol and they attribute, uh, they attribute that idol to the true and living God. But it, it's not the true and living God. But if you're someone who is seeking the truth, if you're someone who is seeking the truth, today I know the truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. And, and, and Jesus is the only one that, that said in the Bible that the truth, if you had your, his word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus Christ is the truth. That is why we say, that is why it says in the Bible that um, Jesus said in the Bible that I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. So you cannot today come to God unless you come through Jesus Christ. You know, I don't, you know, I understand there are lots of people on this, in this world that pray to different gods or, or worship the God that they call the true God. But, but of course, the only way you know the true God is you have to compare the truth with him because the true God cannot tell you a lie. The true God cannot tell you something that does not correspond to reality. The true God will not tell you those things. The false God will tell you things that are completely out there. There's no way you can, uh, there's no way, you, if you look at it, the only way you can believe it is unless you have, um, you don't have a mind to, to think. You're not a, you're not a good thinker, you're not a, you're not a thinking person. That's the only way you believe those kinds of things. Because all of these other gods, so-called gods, have a different ideas. They have a different way of, the, of the projecting the truth. And when you listen to what they have to say, it is very childish. It's very childish. 
And at least when you read the Bible, you realize one thing that will hit you is the truth about it all. That's one thing that will hit you when you read the Bible. That's why I, I, keep, I, can see, I keep saying that the Christian faith is the only true faith on this planet. All other faith are just imposters. And people are, are telling lies. All other faith on the planet is, is, is an imposter formulated by the enemy himself because none of these other beliefs that they consider truth do correspond to reality they do not correspond to reality but some people will say you know what all religion are the same all religion are the same that they all believe in one in one thing they all believe in one god and all that no that's not true all religions are superficially alike, but they are fundamental, fundamentally different. You know, you cannot, for instance, you cannot compare Jesus to Buddha. You cannot compare Jesus to, to Muhammad. You cannot compare Jesus to gurus. He's, he's beyond that. Jesus is beyond those, he's beyond gurus. He's beyond prophets or holy men, so-called. He's beyond all that. That is, Jesus Christ was the first person among all of these other leader, lead, uh, religious, so-called religious leaders that tells people like it is. It tells them that he is the way, the truth, the life. And no man can come to God unless they come through him. No other religious leaders have ever said that. No other so-called religious leaders in our, in our, that we know today have made such a comment like Jesus did. Because one thing is when Jesus said that he is the son of God, you either believe him or you don't believe him. When Jesus said that he's the, that he's the way, the only way to God, you either believe him or you don't believe him. You can you may call you can call him a liar, um, but you cannot if you don't prove that he how he's a, he's a liar. You are you have no argument there because Jesus Christ proved that he's not a liar by backing up the things that he said he would do. Jesus say that he would die and rise again on the third day and he did that so if someone is telling you something that they are the son of god and you can laugh at them all you want but if they tell you that person told you that being the son of god they grant them the power that they will die and on the third day they will rise from the dead then you will know one thing is for sure that when you witness that person come back to life you will start taking them seriously you will start taking them seriously if i tell you that i'm the way if i tell you that i'm the son of god and i die i never no miracle nothing no no supernatural thing happened i just i just came in and I said things, and then I fed away, uh, fade away into, into, uh, into oblivion, into time. You will, you will not, don't have to believe what I said. But if I come back from the dead, like Jesus did, if I told you things that are very, that you think is incredible, you can, you can, you can uh, ignore Jesus. But when he rose from the dead, after he said he would rise from the dead. You have no other option left for you except to believe that he is who he said he is. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, passerbys, that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only solution to mankind's ever deepening problems is Jesus the Christ. No one else can solve the problem of this world but Jesus Christ no one else you cannot find any person because no one has lived the character of life that Jesus lived I have not seen any 
so-called religious leaders that lived the life that Jesus lived. That lived the perfect life. Only Jesus lived the perfect life. Buddha never lived the perfect life. No gurus have lived the perfect life. Muhammad never lived the perfect life. All of these leaders have sinned and they acknowledge that they are sinners. But Jesus Christ is the only one who's never sinned. He was without sin. And that is why he can tell those who were, about, who were trying to throw stone at him, he said, he said, if I have committed a sin, which sin have I committed that you're, you're going to throw stone at me? They have no idea. They have no idea how to answer him. Because they have not seen Jesus committed any bad things, any sin. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to God unless they come to him. And Jesus loved little children too. He wants children to come to him because he said the kingdom of God is for such. So when you hear the Christians on the street corner trying to tell you about this Jesus, you need to listen to them. Because it means life or death for you. It means eternal blessings or eternal curse. Because the Bible said anyone that does not believe in Jesus will perish. Anyone that does not follow Jesus Christ will perish, will die in their sin. Because you and I are born in sin and we are affected by all the sins in the world and the sins of others. Many people have lied, stealed, and stolen things in their lives. No one today that can walk on this planet, that can, in this place today, that can say that they are perfect. That they've never stolen anything or lied before or cheated in some, in some one way or the other. No one has ever, that is walking by today, can say that they've never... Uh, looked at the opposite sex in a in a in a in a dis desiring way. No one has can say that they have not committed um, adultery in their hearts. But Jesus Christ was the only one who never did. He was sinless, and so he's in the place to take up upon himself the sins of the world, because he's not just sinless. But it's also the Son of God. You know, if Jesus was just this mere human, have no connection with God, no connection to what, whom He said He will, He will not be able to pay for your sins or my sin. Because He will be broken as we are. Because you and I, if I am a broke person, I cannot be able to, to pay for the debt of someone else who is broke. So my friend, the same way you and I are broke, bro, you and I are broke, we cannot be able to pay for the other person's debt when you yourself is also broke. But if when you are not broke, you can be able to pay for someone's debt, clear someone's debt, because you, you're rich. You have the means. And that is what Jesus did for us. That is exactly what Jesus did for you and I. Someone who was rich paid for your sins and my sins. The Bible said that none of us can redeem our, each other. You know, David said in the Psalms that none of us are able to redeem one another why because we are both all sinners we are sinners no one sinner can can redeem another sinner you know why because you're a sinner too you cannot be able to redeem another sinner you have to be a sinless person to redeem someone who is not sinful and that you can only do for the sin of that person alone but for the to for the sins of the whole world to redeem the whole world from sin you have to be more more 
than just a person. You have to be the son of God. You have to be the son of God to be able to be rede to redeem the sin of the whole world just by one man. You see, the Bible said, told us in, in Romans chapter 5, it said, just as through one man, sin entered into the world. So therefore, through another, righteousness entered into the world. And he continues, through the disobedience of one man, many were counted sinners. The same way, through the obedience of another, many will be constituted righteous. You see, you and I, the sin of one man affected all of us. Adam, the first man, Adam, the first man, when he came into the world, he sinned against God. Adam is, was the, through him, all of us came. You and I are the children and the, and the descendants of Adam and Eve. And just so, because we're descendants of Adam and Eve, we all inherited all the things that all the things that are around. We all inherited sin entered into the world through Him, and sin spread through to all men. Not because they are innocent, but because they also have sinned. But it was through Adam and Eve that sin crept into the world they were the one who opened the door for sin to come in because they are first parents they opened the door and though because we are their children and their sons and daughters we also are now if affected by that sin that entered in and so the world is not the way it is before the world is in a different shape today because of sin the world is in a, in a mess you know people tell you know this world is in a mess ever looked at yourself in a mirror that you could be part of it too yeah this world is in a mess and you and i are part of that mess you know because you and i have sinned i'm falling short of the glory of god you know in North America, we have, of course, we, we have, we know, may, we may, we've committed a fair share of sin, more than many people, maybe, may, maybe more than many other nations on the plan, on this, on the face of the earth. I mean, in North America, we have so free to do, to live and disobey God and do whatever, all kinds of sin, manner of sin, to practice. God bless you. So in North America, we live all kinds of different lifestyles. You know, we practice fornication, we practice homosexuality, we practice um, ab abortion, we practice killing children in the womb. I mean, up, you know, of course, top. Adding to that, now we we are not we are now in our legalizing euthanasia. We are now saying that it's okay. We we now saying. After we're saying that it's okay to kill a, kill a child in the womb, we're now saying, well, it's okay to kill anybody who wants to be killed. So now you can go to a, a, a physician in Canada. A person can go to a physician and have the physician, the doctor, give them an injection a poisonous injection a lethal injection to kill themselves and so we have these things going on in this nation we have all these sin in in, in many other nations you won't see that happening you know euthanasia is not being practiced in africa you know you've never seen government sanctioning euthanasia in africa you know we haven't seen it in in north Af in north um, uh, north um, uh, south america it's always in this west in the western world part of the world 
It's always in a Western liberal society that these kinds of things get practiced. These kinds of things are being promoted in other places. So yes, we do have more, we have sinned more than many other nations. We have sinned more than many other society. Western society has sinned more than any other society as well. You know, the, uh, the ancient Aztecs, Aztecs, they were, they were sacrificing humans, you know, but we have surpassed them in North America today. We have surpassed them sacrificing human beings and we went past that. You know, we're sacrificing our children, the most vulnerable, the most innocent among us. And we do it in the name of freedom. And we do we commit sin in the name of freedom we commit sin, but not knowing that freedom has there's a limit there's a limit to freedom you have freedom to you know to a certain degree you don't have freedom to do whatever you want you know you don't have freedom to go into someone's house and urinate in their house you don't have that freedom you know when you when we talk about freedom you know that freedom has limits so you're not you're not free to do whatever you want so in this nation in our nation we have copied many other western nation like in europe we have learned from them and we are copying what they are doing and we are applying those kinds of things in our nation as well here so we as a nation have sinned against god we as society, as a society has sinned against the true and living God, all of us. And we have fallen short of the glory of God. You know, besides, besides the, the, the going to the doctor to get you a lethal injection uh, so you can die, which is being practiced in Canada today, you know, in Europe, of course, they are, they, they are, they've been doing that in Europe for a while now longer than canada and in europe you can even just by de being depressed just by being depressed alone you can go to these um western european nations to go and 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 and, and get, get a lethal injection to a point that a, a belgian guy has invented a a capsule a suicide capsule that all you have to do is just walk into it and close the door the glass door and you press a button that release uh, uh, the poisonous gas into the chamber to kill yourself <laughs> you see that's the point someone invented it and then uh, whoever wants to go and buy it, go buy it and and they tell you, okay, you know what, we can deliver this suicide capsule at the beach. So you can, you can, sit, you can lay in it while you're watching the waves and while you're watching the horizon. And then you can push the button to release a lethal gas to kill you. That's how, that's how demented our society, these Western society have gotten us, you know. In the in the early 19 and uh, in the early 1900s, it was all the, the the movement, the atheist movement of the challenging God movement started and gained momentum. And over these years, they've been doing it incrementally. In the early 1900s, the best. The best, the quote that they were saying, their best phrase was that God is dead. That's what they were saying in the early, in the 19th century. And someone said, well, if God is dead in the 19th century, then the 20th century will be the most bloodiest century ever. And it was like he was looking in, inside into the future and predicting it. But he wasn't, he just, it's just a common sense. When you take God out of society, you have chaos. You don't have order anymore. When you take God out of society, that's, 
what you get. And so, when God in, 19, in, in the 1900s, where they say God is dead, well, no wonder why 20th century became the bloodiest century ever, and into 21st century, because we took God out of the equation. We say, well, that God doesn't exist. We, are, we have arrived. Some people now will tell you, you know, we are progressive. We are progressive. Well, you know, what these Christianity that you're talking about, all of these things are written in old books. Long time ago, it's written in, uh, in old books that, uh, you know, all of those things are, 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 have, have passed. We are living in a new time. Are you really? For sure. So in that, when we took away God out of our lives, we had the First World War. As it wasn't far behind. Second World War wasn't far behind it. First World War, we killed millions. We got good at how to kill people. In the First World War, the Second World War, we got better at how to kill people. And today we are, we are experts in killing people. That we can design different kinds of weapons, bombs. We can design different kinds of weapons. Um, electromagnetic, chemical, biological, you name it. And we can send it out there to kill more people. That's how evil our nation, uh, we have begun, become as a human being. And all it took was convincing few people that there is no God. That's all we have done. All it took to cause more bloodshed on the earth is convince few people that there is no God. You know, um, Stalin was once a theological school student who went to the study theology. And from there he met of course, the socialist, he met the socialist, and he's no longer studying theology, now he's studying socialism and, and atheism. Of course, socialism always follows atheism. Athe you have to be atheist first, and then you, you can be, become a socialist. Or you have to be someone who have no idea what the Bible is saying, and then you become a socialist. So Stalin became a socialist from be, from a theological student to a socialist, godless mind. And that he, what did he do? He killed many millions of people of his own people, not even talking about other people. All of these people. They all do these crimes because they believe there is no God. You know, there are people who have, you know, little fear of God, they're still committing crimes. They have little fear of God. They know that there is a God, they just don't fully know Him. And they can still commit a crime. What do you think about a person who doesn't believe that there is a God at all? What do you think they would do? No conscience. It's all part of the same primordial soup and machine. So that is why Stalin can kill with impunity and all these people because they were convinced that there is no God. But I'm here, I'm, I'm here today to tell you that there is a God in heaven and there is a God who created mankind who, who the Bible said breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man began become a living being there is a god in heaven despite what the lies that the enemy the te the, uh, the the television is telling you despite the lies that the textbook uh evolutionary textbooks is telling you there is a god there is a god who created you there is a god who created me and you and I are not going to escape the judgment day if we don't turn to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You and I are not going to escape the judgment day because a day is coming. A day is coming when all those 
who are alive today and those who have died in the past will stand before God and will give account of their own life before the true and living God. You know, that will be you someday. You can maybe say, well, I, I, I have uh, my life. I'm going to live it up. I'm going to do whatever I want and I'm going to enjoy my life. You can say that. As the book of Ecclesiastes say, young man, live your life to the fullest. Do all you can, but know that God is going to judge you. God is going to judge you and you are going to give account to the living God who made you. So despite what they are telling you, despite what they are telling you, someone try to convince you that there is no God or that God is dead. Despite what they are telling you, I'm here to tell you today that they are lying to you. And if you believe that lie, you are going to die in your sins and you are going to be cast into the fire. The Bible said, there is a fire of judgment. The Bible said that Jesus came with Holy Spirit and with fire. The Bible said Jesus Christ will baptize us, mankind, with Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing shovel is with him. So Jesus has the Holy Spirit on one hand. He has fire on the other hand. If you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you come to Jesus Christ and you receive him as your Lord and your Savior. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. But if you want to be baptized with fire, all you have to do is just keep on living what, doing what you're doing. Keep on keeping on your sin. Keep on living the life of debauchery, life of fornication, life of of all kinds of wickedness keep living that he will baptize you with fire you see Jesus is the one whom God has granted all judgment you see before Jesus every knee shall bow before Jesus every knee will bend and every tongue will confess him as Lord whether you like it or you don't like it you will know that Jesus is Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. This Jesus will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. Turn to Jesus Christ today, my friend, and receive his Holy Spirit. Turn away from Jesus and you receive his fiery judgment. You will receive that fire. The fire, the Bible says, that would, devour, that, that would devour the ungodly. That will burn all the wicked. You see, the wicked, the Bible says, are graves. The wicked will turn towards grave. The wicked will be turned to Sheol. A place, a Hebrew name for a place of a of the abode of the dead. All is telling you that the wicked will die. And the same with every nation that forgets God. You see, if North America forgot God, if North America and the Western world has forgotten God and has kicked God out of the discussion, out of their lives, and out of the school system, my friend, if they have done so, guess what will happen? Our nation will be destroyed. Our nation will be gone. All the Western world will be destroyed. Because the only thing that happens that, that keep a nation present before God and alive and undestroyed is if that nation is a righteous nation. You know? That's no, no reason. No, uh, there's no... Um, None other reason why the Bible said that the righteousness exalts a nation. A righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace 
to a nation. Righteousness lifts up a nation. Sin brings it down. When you're going around um, legalizing abortion as a nation, all you are doing is signing the death warrant of your nation. Because guess who's going to be in your, ruling your nation very soon? Foreigners. If you are a nation that sanctions killing of their elderly or killing of their of those who are sick who are who are um who have suffering from who are suffering from pain those who have been made depressed and that that there is no solution no hope for them and they choose another way out so we and that way being me being that to be to be killed if you're that nation that does such such a thing my friend you are signing a death warrant of your nation because god who sees all things will judge you that nation will be judged the grace of god is being extended to us today so that we can turn from our sins so that we can have eternal life the grace of god is being extended to all of us but you and i have to embrace that you have to embrace the grace of god the bible the gospel is for free it's a free gift well, the problem is that people reject free gifts today you know people want to do it themselves you can do every other thing yourself but when it comes to salvation you cannot do it yourself you need Jesus Christ when it comes to salvation you need Christ so our nation the nation of Canada and the Western civilization we need Jesus Christ and we when we have Christ in our life all of these things abortion all of these other things um, euthanasia all of these will not be an issue it won't be an issue to be debating it won't will be an issue to even be talking about all of these social problems that you that we have as a nation will not exist because many of these social issues are all manufactured They're all manufactured by those who seek to gain something from it those who are seeking to to be to use it as a platform to become popular to gain themselves more power and at the end the ultimate goal is to subjugate the ultimate goal is to subjugate the people but you know what god offered us freedom but when we reject freedom guess what god gives us he gives us slavery he gives us slavery you know when you turn back away from god and turn from him you won't have freedom he will give you over to your own devices and you will be you will become slaves to your sin and as slaves you will do what your slave master tells you to do but when you turn to god the bible said righteousness exalts a nation our nation needs god many western nation needs god many western nation have forsaken god and our lives are messed up and in a way that we are divorce has, has skyrocketed depression has skyrocketed all because we have forsaken god all because we think that we can do it by ourselves by our mighty hands but anything can be further than the truth we all need you need jesus i need jesus all of us need jesus and when you are continuing to reject jesus christ there's no hope my friend for you you cannot reject the son of god and have hope you cannot reject the prince of peace and have peace Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. 
When you reject him, you won't have peace. You know, the angel announced to those shepherds in the field, they said, joy to the world. Praise to God in the highest, they said. Praise to God in the highest. And good news to the man. Good news to man. You have to be a rejecter of your own life to reject the good news. Whoever rejects this good news rejects their life. Whoever rejects Christ Jesus hates their life. Whoever rejects God hates their life. Whoever rejects life hates life. Period. God is life and he has placed this life in his son Jesus Christ. And they that reject this life will not find life. They will not have life. But instead, the Bible said that the wrath of God remains upon them. So my friends, you see that when we reject God, He rejects us. His wrath abides in us. But when we receive Christ, His love abides in us. And we will not walk around in depression. We will not have all of these um, suicidal thoughts. All of these um, marital infidelities that plagues many people today. Or high divorce rates that plagues many people today in North America. We will have peace and joy in the Lord. Who doesn't want that? I want peace. We all of us, all of us want peace. But the fact is um, when we are told how to attain peace, we reject it. We all want peace. We just want it in a different way. In our way. We all want peace, but when the Prince of Peace come to us, to offer us peace, we say, no, we don't want your peace. We want our own manufactured peace. We wonder why we have so many struggles in our lives. No matter how we, why we have so many wars in this, on, this, on this earth. Many people died from many of these wars. And when we sign the peace treaty, it doesn't get honored because we are not walking in peace and why are we not walking in peace because we rejected God who loved us loved us enough to send his only son to come down to share in our pain to share in our worries to share in our in our struggles to carry our burden and bear it on himself so that we can have the freedom to take a fresh air to to come up and take a, a gulp of air and keep living continue to live so that we no longer submerged anymore in depression in our in 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 alcoholism in all these sinful conduct that we live today as, a, as people in North America and we are so-called freedom but we use it for evil God is the author of life God is the author of life and if you love God if you love life you must adhere to God's words because therein is life there's greater love had no man that a person lay down his life for his friends. Even greater love, a person lay down his life for his enemy. And that's what Jesus did for you. Jesus laid down his life for you. Jesus laid down his life so that you can live. So that you may not be judged, condemned, be cast into the lake of fire.
where they're, where they're in his second death. He paid the price for your sin so that you don't go to the fire. That is love, my friends. That is the love of Jesus Christ. If you love life, you must love Jesus. And you must, if you love Jesus, you must follow him. You must live like he lived. You must follow his footsteps. You know, not just say, you know, I know Jesus. You know, I know Jesus. He's a, he's a prophet. No, that's not enough. You don't, you don't know Jesus that as he wants to be known. If you know Jesus and you trust Jesus and he said, give me your life. I am the way, the truth and the life. And you will believe him. But if you don't know Jesus, you believe he's just a prophet, you will not give him your life because you have no idea who he is. So my friend, Jesus Christ is the only way. If you are seeking any way to God today, and you doing you are doing it through um, you are doing it through Buddhism, trying to seek God through Buddhism, you're not going to find Him through Buddhism. If you are trying to seek God through Hinduism, you are not going to find God in Hinduism. If you are trying to follow Sikhism to find God, you're not going to find God in Sikhism. If you say, well, I'm going to follow Islam, you are not going to find God in Islam or in Hare Krishna. You're not going to find God in Hare Krishna. And if you are saying, okay, well, I'm going to follow Judaism, I'm, you know, I know that they, they, the, this, this, this is the oldest than Christianity, my friend. You are not going to find God in Judaism if you don't first acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord, as the Messiah. If you're not going to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Messiah, your Judaism is just that. It's a religion without God. You just have a religion. I'm speaking to those who, are, who practice Judaism. You're practicing Judaism. You, what I know about what Judaism of current Judaism teaches about Christ is evil. So you cannot blaspheme the Son of God. You cannot curse and talk to the Son of God as he is, uh, uh, as you do, as you do, as many people who practice Judaism do talk about Jesus with that disrespect and all of that, you cannot say you know God. Because Jesus, whoever has the Father, has the Son. That's right. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. So, you tell me all these religion, that you practice all these religion, it's not going to save you. None of those religion are going to save you. The only person that will save you is Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the only truth, the only life. You need to follow him. He is the son of God and the Messiah sent to the world. The Messiah of Israel, Messiah of Israel. And he is the son of David. It's the Mashiach ben David, ben David. Mashiach ben David. He is the one who's calling you. And God is calling you. So stop running from him. Stop begging out. Stop saying, have me excused. Stop saying, you know, I'm, I have this. I have that. I, I'm going to go do it. You know, please excuse me this time. Because... All of those who excuse themselves from the banquet in that parable did not enter the banquet. And that means that they weren't saved. Because the banquet is for those is called for those who are called out of the world. If Jesus calls you, follow him. And you tell me how can how does Jesus call a person? 
Well, you have a preacher on the street telling you that Jesus is the only way to God. You have a preacher on the street telling you that the word of God. You, why would you expect God to come and tell you that when you have, what's wrong with her? When you are hearing it on the street corner and you are not doing anything about it. Now God will tell you that there's a preacher on the street preaching about the, 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 the Christ of God. On a judgment day, you're not going to tell God, well, you didn't, nobody told me. Well, I didn't know about this Jesus business. You know, I saw those Christians on the street and I thought they were crazy to be out in the cold, to be out shivering and handing out tracts and talking about this Jesus person. And I thought they were crazy, but that will not be an excuse. You know, thinking that Jesus those Christians are crazy and thinking of those old G, those Jesus freaks. Um, I thought they were wrong. That's not gonna be enough. That's not enough. Any excuse that will take you to heaven. God does not hear that excuse. God wants you to know Jesus, His Son, because He is the only way you can be saved. Muhammad, Allah cannot save you, and. Krishna cannot save you, Shiva or whatever you worship, and your Hindu gods cannot save you, neither can anybody called, you know, Guru save you. Gurus does not, do not save, God saves. So my friend, come to Jesus Christ, He is the only way, the truth and the life. Are you Christian too? Are you Christian? Yes, I am. Christian, no good for you, you know? You start coming back very soon. Yes, yeah, yes. You have to tell them, you know, otherwise they go to the hell. Yes. You yeah, accept them. Yes. God bless you. God bless you, sister. Yes, that's what we are here to do. That's why we embrace, we embrace the cold, you know, we freeze and we stand here, tell you about Jesus Christ, call you to repentance, you know. It's not because we have nothing better to do. We have lots of the, we got lots of things that we, if we want to do it, we're going to do it. We can come up with many plans, just like, just like you too. Because of God, the love of God, and the love of neighbor, we set aside our plans. We set aside our, our what we, more, what we, what we will be putting as priority if we were in the world. Our priorities have changed now. That's why we are here to tell you about Jesus. Because of the love of God and the love of people.